globalization and indian economy we were discussing regarding the world trade organization world trade organization world trade organization it was a successor of a gap general agreement on trade general agreement of trade and tariffs general agreement of trade and tariffs trade and tariffs it is the legal world trade organization is the legal and institutional foundation of the multilateral trading system it provides the principal contractual obligations determining how government frame and implement the domestic trade legislations and regulation in short we can say as a wto world trade organization responsible for the strictly implementation of a rules and regulations on behalf of which as a country's government different countries they can function for the international trade they can function for international trade it is the platform <clears throat> world trade organization is the platform on which trade relations among countries evolve through the collective debate negotiations and adjustments it it has the significantly influenced the liberalization process in most of the developing countries including the india the aim of a wto is conduct international trade among countries of the world in a non discriminatory manner clear the world trade organization it was as established on 1st january of 1995 1st january of 1995 1995 its headquarter is situated at geneva at geneva WTO's headquarters located at Geneva. Presently, there are the 164 members are there. 164 members are there. <clears throat> India was a founder member, founder member of both GATT and the WTO. India joined the General Agreement of Trade and Tariffs on India joined GATT in 1947. in 1947 in 2006 india became as a part of the wto it became as a part of a wto in 2006 <clears throat> in 2006 what are the essential functions of a wto first wto world trade organization world trade organization administering and implementing the multilateral trade agreements multilateral trade agreements multilateral trade agreement which together which together make up the world trade organization it acting as a forum for a multilateral trade negotiations it acting as a forum for the multilateral trade negotiations it see it seeking it seeking to resolve trade disputes to resolve trade disputes to resolve trade disputes it overseeing the national trade policies national trade policies it cooperating with the other international institutions involved in <clears throat> global economic policy making the main thrust of the world trade organization agreement is to promote international trade without any fear of discrimination without any discrimination without any fear of a discrimination amongst the members 
themselves and between the domestically produced goods and services the world trade organization extends the most favored nation treatment to all its members on an equal basis the basic strength of the world trade organization system lies in lies in developing the infrastructure in different economy the dispute settlement system of the world trade organization enables the member countries to settle bilateral problems in a in a rule based system facilitating the trade expansion this is the main reason why a large number of countries from a developing world including india including india despite their lower economic lower economic growth have been attracted to the world trade organization world trade organization wants both the import and export restrictions to be abolished it expects the countries to follow multilateral agreements formulated by the group countries those group countries which collectively as engage with each other agreed for the bilateral trade in economy bilateral trade in economy is that clear the need of a in our economy when we talking about the indian economy there is still as the still the international trade is not expanded at a larger in scale it's due to the those problems which are associated with the economic conditions prevailing in a country so why do we need to why do we need why do we need for economic reforms why do we need economic reforms in context of a indian economy that economy which is known as a mixed economy in which public private sector collectively responsible for providing as a face for economy the growth in economy so what are the economic reforms which are required for required in context of india first public sector performed badly could not achieve the desired objectives first economic reform which is desired in context of a indian economy first one economic reforms <clears throat> why do we as a need of the economic reforms because need of economic reforms because public sector performed badly and could not achieve the desired objectives of a country what are the desired objective high per capita income high living standard better job opportunities these are not desired due to as a public sector that sector which has function for a socio economic welfare clear second india's balance of payments are the deficit balance of payments are deficit india's balance of payments are deficit means india borrowed a large number of the india borrowed loans from a world bank which are still as a pending in situation still not repaid by a country those loans had by the government for regularization of their work within as a economy third foreign exchange reserves foreign exchange reserves were at its lower in the 1990s which led to the foreign exchange crisis in the country in the age of a 1990s the economic crisis lies in a indian economy such capital 1990s due to as a economic cost patra in 1990 indira vikas patra clear next fourth sharp rise in petrol prices due to the gulf crisis due to the internal problems raised in a gulf countries internal problems raised in a gulf countries israel philistine iran iraq afghanistan the internal problems raised in relation to the america which leads to the hike in the petrol prices hike in pri petrol prices next poverty 
next six is poverty next unemployment expansion of the unemployment expansion of unemployment next inflation inflation in general commodities hike in prices increase in prices of the common usable items commodities next shortage of capital shortage of capital shortage of capital shortage of capital next slow economic development slow economic development technological backwardness technological backwardness deficiency of manufacturing units deficiency of manufacturing units over dependence on a primary sector over dependence on primary sector over dependence of primary sector these are the major problems which are associated for the, which are related with the low economic growth in context of a indian economy indian economy in 1991 our borrowing from the abroad increased to such an extent that we were finding difficulty in paying even the interest also so we were not in a position to pay for our imports we faced a we faced as the financial crisis and indian government had to borrow the money for internal money from the international banks world bank and the international monetary fund imf international international monetary fund monetary fund international monetary fund international monetary fund to which the government of india borrowed their loans borrowed their credit borrowed their credit in control in order to control the situation and to save the economy from a disaster the government started several reforms in 1991 which are included under a new economic policy new economic policy in which as a liberalization privatization and globalization these were used to resolve the economic problems of a country economic problems of a country the new economic policy aims to put the economy on the track of a rapid economic development it revolves around the liberalization privatization and globalization and globalization liberalization implies the liberating the trade and industry from unwanted government control and restrictions unwanted government control and restrictions the main aim of liberalization is to free the large private sector from bureaucratic control liberalization means a reduced role of the government and a greater role for the market forces producers are free to decide what goods are to be produced they will decide as to when and where they should sell their products pricing of the goods to be done by the producers themselves restrictions on the movement of goods and services restrictions on the movement of goods and services have been removed under the liberalization doors have been left open for the multinational companies monopolies restrictive trade practices act has been liberalized liberalization in and we can see as a liberalization led to the market oriented economy in this economy producers are not subject to any control and the restrictions imposed by the government restrictions imposed by the government are removed government has started to remove their trade barriers for encouragement of foreign direct investment foreign direct investment clear 
so when the trade barriers it will be not there obstructions they will be uh, they will be not there under such circumstances more capital investment can possible in economy through the foreign for which as a foreign direct investment and a portfolio investment occur in a domestic industry for improving the economic structure pace of economic structure clear liberalization any questions next is a privatization privatization it refers to the any process that reduces the participation of the state or public sector in economic activi activities of a country privatization generally refers to the any process that reduces the participation of a state participation of a public sector in economic activities of a country privatization is a closely associated with the liberalization it implies greater role for the private capital and enterprise in the functioning of an economy such private groups which are generally function for a earning of the profits with the earnings of a maximum profits they are providing as a better commodities and the services better services in this process as india in our country in our state punjab state electricity board it was as a privatized it visualized in a form of a better power supply which earlier not possible with the government government earlier which was work for the welfare last section of a population it utilized the power at a low cost by increase in a per unit charges simultaneously there are the services also improved number of the power cuts reduced since last two decades two decades in indian economy clear so that's why as a privatized privatization in a modern economy has played the significant role in a economic development of economy economic development of our country clear till there any questions yes 10th any questions till there any questions 10th next is the next is the uh, what was asked the foreign policy of india what steps were taken by the government of india to attract the foreign investment foreign investment infrastructure is a, cr a critical input for industrial and overall economic development it also provides the basic amenities which improve the quality of life infrastructure projects infrastructure projects as the better living conditions for their citizens in country which involves the huge initial investments huge initial investments second first it involves huge initial investments second high capital output ratio high capital output ratio high risk and low rates of return high risk and low rates of return all these factors make private sector entry as a difficult in indian economy infrastructure services have been historically provided by the public sector with greater demand changing technology increasing complexity for financing the infrastructure projects and the budgetary constraints the public sector is no longer able to discharge efficiently its role as a provider of infrastructure services the government has recognized that private sector's participation including the foreign investment is required to supplement the public sector's efforts various reforms have been made by the government to improve the infrastructure sectors and the rules and procedures for investment rules and procedures for investments have been liberalized in order to provide the 
in order to provide an enabling environment conducive for private participation the role of the government has changed from a owners and sole providers to the that of a facilitators and of the safeguarding the interest in last chapter of a geography we discussed that the bot build operate and transfer system presently the government hired the private company for construction and maintenance of roads construction and maintenance of a better roads for economy in this process as a private companies are hired by the government these companies known for the construction of a roads and for the period of 15 to 20 years they are collecting as a toll taxes some share of a taxes toll tax has given to the state or a central government after completion of 15 to 20 years such rights of a roads these are transferable towards the government transferable towards government now the governments are not directly as providing as a services they becomes as the facilitators government in a present economy they are change their role from owner and sole provider to that a facilitator and of safeguarding the interests of the different sections of society different sections of economy clear for the such kind of a foreign investment for which as a government has took the first step as special economic zones sezs special economic zones special economic zones the special economic zones bill was passed by the parliament in 2005 bill passed by the parliament in 2005 to implement the provisions of a special economic zones act as according to the special economic zones rule special economic zones rules which provides for a very attractive fiscal incentives and tax concessions for the developers as well as the manufacturers manufacturers according to the act the establishment of a free trade and warehousing zones to create world class trade related infrastructure trade related infrastructure establishment of an authority for each special economic zones to import greater administrative autonomy and designation of designation of special courts and single enforcement agency to ensure speedy trial and investigation speedy trial and investigation of notified offences committed in a special economic zones the act will provide as a confidence and stability to domestic and foreign investors and signal the government's commitment to special economic zones india was one of the first in asia to recognize the effectiveness of the export processing zones export processing zones associated with the associated with the special economic zones in india the different parts are known for concentration of a different types of industries western parts of a country known for the cotton textiles which are concentrated in the parts of a gujarat maharashtra madhya pradesh southern india karnataka andhra pradesh known for the it industries hub of it industries south eastern states of a west bengal west bengal known for the concentration of a jute mills so such kind of industrial hubs develop in economy which provide as a specialized kinds of a commodities and services for individuals such kind of a goods and services which are preferably used for export purposes export purposes export purposes the model of export processing zones export processing zones it promoted as the exports with asia's first asia's first situated at a kandla 
in 1965 asia's first export processing zone set up at a kandla in 1965 1965 the special economic zones policy was announced in april 2000 april 2000 this policy was intended to make the special economic zones an engine for economic growth supported by quality infrastructure complemented by an attractive fiscal package both at the center and the state level with minimum possible regulations with minimum possible regulations clear to instill as a confidence in the investors and signal the government's commitment to the stable special economic zone policy with the view to impact stability to the scz's rule which generating as a greater economic activities in all over the country for which the special economic zones act 2005 was passed by the parliament in may 2005 it supported by the special economic zones rule which came into effect on february 10 2006 as according to the special economic zones the government of india has providing as a basic infrastructure basic infrastructure at affordable rates like growth of a means of a transport growth of means of transport better health facilities better health facilities educational facilities educational services food grains at a affordable rate food grains at affordable rate these factors are largely affecting as the concentration of a population in country concentration of population in country clear tell there any questions concentration of population within as a economy any questions concentration of population in a those economies where better means of transport are provided by the government at low cost health facilities educational facilities goods food grains are available at affordable rates means prices are controlled by the government price prices of commodities controlled by government by providing by a regular supply of commodities supply of commodities in market commodities in markets next as of what is the political impact of a globalization political impact of globalization the basic merit of the globalization is that it is a challenge and an opportunity for comparatively comparatively weaker countries to become the strong by efficient employment of resources to survive in a global competition weaker countries should establish policies for export oriented export oriented policies means that such countries they have to emphasize over the favorable balance of trade they have to increase they have to produce such type of the commodities which are demanded in a world market to which they can increase their exports they can increase their exports comparatively the imports when exports are increasing comparatively the imports this has indicates the positive balance of trade the favorable balance of trade favorable balance of trade in a present scenario production it should be reoriented significantly to the manufacture traded goods economies of economies of scale and technology upgradation should be consciously opted for many developing countries which continue to remain traders in a primary goods they should go in for value added manufacture which would be employment creating employment creating 
what is as the impact of a uh, impact of world trade organization on indian economy world trade organization on indian economy first world trade organization help india to receive technology from developed countries at affordable rates at cheaper rates world trade organization make possible to receive technology in india from developed countries at cheaper rates clear second world trade organization gives an opportunity to india it gives opportunity to india for trading with other member countries india can export their goods and services to the other countries indians agricultural based goods they are exported towards the developed countries of the world in such ways india imported as the manufactured goods in our economy in our economy so world trade organization gives as a opportunity opportunity to india for trade with their member countries of a wto through which india it can export their goods and services to other countries third world trade organization world trade organization are biased against the developing countries b i a s e d it biased against as the biased against developing countries they are forced to open their economies in the interest of developed countries interest of developed countries fourth is as according to the agreement of wto wto's agreement wto's agreement on agriculture on agriculture which put restrictions on the provision of which put restrictions on the provision of subsidized food grains in india subsidized food grains in india it is feared that if india abides by the rules of wto the prices of a several essential commodities several essential life saving commodities or drugs it may increase in future as according to the wto's agreement on agriculture put restrictions on the provision of subsidized food grains in india it is feared that if india abides by the rules of wto the prices of several essential commodities and life saving drugs their prices it will it may increase in future it may increase in future so wto is supposed to allow the free trade for all but it is seen that the developed countries have unfairly retained trade barriers on the other hand wto rules have forced the developing countries to remove trade barriers india will mobilize the opinion of developing countries in operationalizing the special and differential treatment provisions in various wto agreements on anti dumping and subsidy as according to the international trade under the conditions of a wto india importing as the india imports the garbage from a pakistan bangladesh pakistan bangladesh and nepal towards india its basic purpose as that through which through that garbage india recycles the plastic 